book of Genesis chapter 4. A very familiar story we'll be reading. A very familiar scripture we'll be reading. Uh, I've been in church my whole life. And uh, some of this stuff I'm going to say tonight, Brother Fred may ruffle some feathers. But that's all right. Yeah, come on. Uh, I'm held accountable for preaching Thanks. the Word of God, Brother Titus, and I'm about to preach the Word of God whether y'all like it or whether you don't. And uh, I love y'all so much, I want you to make it to heaven. Brother Albert, I love y'all so much, I want to tell you the truth so you can get to heaven. Says Charlene, what's that you say about somebody, a preacher that won't preach you the truth doesn't love you? Right. Ain't got no use for it. Nope. So if you have your Bible, go with me in the book of Genesis chapter 4. Very familiar story. We'll, uh, we'll be reading from very familiar scripture. i uh, like to go a different thought and a different way with it. Uh, but this is what the Lord's been dealing with me and our brother Matt. And uh, everybody wants to jump on board when somebody's doing wrong. Brother Fred, everybody wants to point fingers when somebody is doing wrong. Right. But you know that's not our job to do. Right. You know what our job to do, Sister Rachel? Is to be a step in the stone. So if you have your Bible, go with me in the book of Genesis chapter 4. Talking about Cain and Abel. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? Listen to what Cain said to the Lord. And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? Pretty sharp thing to be mouthing off to the Lord, don't you think? Talking to somebody earlier tonight before church, and, uh, earlier in the day, and that was their remark. Pretty, pretty brave to be asking the Lord that, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Wow. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crying unto me from the ground. Let's pray the reading of God's word. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come before you, Lord, once again today, God. We ask that you anoint your servant, God. Ask that you anoint these lips of clay, God. Ask that you anoint everything that's said and done here tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, for your word that's anointed, God. I ask, God, that you prepare our hearts, Lord. That the word would fall on the good ground tonight, God, in our hearts, Lord. God, we ask that you hide your word in our heart, God. Let us cherish it like a hidden treasure, God. Come on. One, I've got to give you all the praise and all the glory. Do unto thy lovely name. In your precious heavenly name we say, Amen. Amen. Don't know how long I'm going to be up here. Don't know, uh, and don't, don't really foresee myself, Brother Titus, uh, from jumping from over the beams right up there in front of me. Uh, just kind of feel like talking what's on my heart and uh, what's on my heart is for the times there's a lot of people doing a lot of wrong yeah. come on brother Matt you've heard the saying two wrongs don't make a right yeah. if you see your brother doing wrong what is your responsibility to lift them up, to lift them up. We all know the story, and I know the Bible doesn't give great detail, Brother Fred, how uh, Cain slew his brother. But uh, back then, they might not have all the weapons that we do. They might not. They, we know they didn't have guns, and, but I could almost see it, Sister Charlene. Cain picking up a rock, yeah. beating his brother to death with a rock, and, and I thought there's a lot of people being rocks today in the house of God. And there's a lot of people 
that's doing wrong, Brother Matt, but I thought if I could just be a rock, Brother Titus, I'd want to be a rock that somebody could step yes. on to get a lift ahead of me and to get to heaven. I thought it, if, if, if it was me, uh, that was I was falling down, Sister Rachel, I want somebody to lift me up. Yes. If it was me that was hurting, I want somebody to pick me up. And I know the last uh, few times I got up to preach, I've been preaching on the hurt and the people that are down and out. But Brother Fred, uh, there's a lot of people down and out that's hurt uh, and they won't even darken the church doors uh, because somewhere along the line, uh, somebody was a stepping stone. Uh, somewhere along the line, somebody threw a rock at him. But I thought, Brother Titus, uh, if I could just throw out a lifeline uh, to that hurt one, uh, if I could just throw out a lifeline to say uh, there's still hope, uh, you may be falling, uh, but don't be discouraged. Uh, there's still hope for you today. Uh, if I could just be a light to that one, uh, Sister Charlene, I'd like to say uh, to that lost and backslider, uh, you can still come back home uh, and there's still grace. Uh, there's still mercy. Uh, we can say there's still grace and mercy uh, in God's house when it's us uh, and when it's our own, uh, but there's still in grace and mercy uh, for the one that's lost and dying uh, that won't even darken the church doors. Uh, there's still hope uh, for the one that needs hope. You know what our job is? It is our job to be our brother's keeper. Right. Brother Matt, it's my job to help you. It's your job to help me. Right. You can't make me go to heaven, but you can sure help me get there. Amen. We live in a day and hour where it's all about us. It's almost like the church world has turned political. What can I do to get ahead of the game? What kind of scandalous dirt can I dig up on somebody? Right. What can I get started about somebody to make myself look pretty? Come on. What can I do to discourage and to take credit to, to take credit away from Sister Charlene. And when I say credit, I don't mean what, uh, I don't mean it like y'all may think, but I mean to take away from Sister Charlene's experience. Right. We're too busy destroying one another. Yeah. Amen. Brother Fred, we're too busy trying to discredit uh, somebody's walk with God. That there's a world around us dying lost. Yeah. Rocks can do two things. They can help or they can hinder. Yeah. You hear what I say? Rocks can do two things, Sister Charlie. They can help or they can hinder. How do we help in the help, Brother Matt? Be an anchor. Be an anchor. Be a stepping stone. You get a big enough rock and you can stand on it and nothing can move you. You get a big enough rock and you can build on that rock and build on that rock and nothing's ever going to shake your foundation. Amen. But when the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. Sister Charlene, what did the Pharisees do? First thing they done after they brought her to Jesus was they picked up a rock. There's going to stone her, Brother Titus. Maybe before they even got to Jesus, Brother Matt, maybe they was already picking up their stones. So the church world, Sister Anne's got to the point to where we pick up rocks before we ever do anything else and we're ready to stone somebody because they messed up. Yeah. I know the Bible says judgment must begin at the house of God. 
But we ain't even in the house of God half the time when we're trying to stone somebody. We're trying to do our own work and push our own agenda to try to make ourselves look good instead of pointing them to Jesus Christ. We're too worried about what can we do. And I I don't want nobody to fall out with me. I don't want nobody to get hurt at me. But it is not our job to be God's policeman. No, he don't need us. It is not our job, Brother Titus, to be God's police. There's people walking around Austin, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. All over the world, Sister Rachel, they're walking around thinking because they've got it all together, they can do something for the kingdom of God. Well, if that was me, I'd tell you what I would do. Yeah. If that was me in that situation, I'd tell you how I handled it. Well, thank God you ain't in that situation. And thank God forevermore you ain't God. Yeah. We say we want our church houses full, Brother Titus. Mm -hmm. But when somebody comes in and they don't look like us and they don't act like us and they don't smell like us and they don't look like us, We're the first ones to throw stones. Now, nobody fall out with me. You know there's a difference when somebody's here to be a distraction. You know when right. there's somebody here to be sincere. Right. Don't you fall out with me and don't you get my words twisted and mixed up. There's a difference. Yes, come on. This is Charlene. There's people walking up and down the road with needles hanging out of their arm. And we're too worried about how this one's doing and what that one's doing. What's the Bible say? The Bible says if you see your brother overtaken in fault, restore. Go and lift him up. Sister Rachel, we're living in a day and hour where there's not a lot of lifting up. Right. Oh, let me let me recant that. There's a lot of lifting up, but they're not lifting up the Lord. Yeah. They're not lifting up the one that's hurt and the one that's discouraged. Right. I'm not very uh, big into the whole uh, contemporary music. But there are a few songs that I like yeah. for the Titus and one. And, and I don't really know if I like it, but I remember the lyrics of it. And it says, if we are the body, if we're the hands, if we're the feet, what are we doing? What are we doing? One writer said, Sister Rachel, if sinners must go to hell, let them go to hell by leaping over our dead bodies. Because yeah. right. we've preached the gospel. Yeah. We say we want the church house full. But brother Fred, we ain't going to get the church house full by sitting with a self-righteous spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm not tooting my own horn. Uh, and, and I'm not... I, 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 I'm just telling this. I don't want nobody to think it the wrong way. And I'm glad the young lady had uh, respect for the house of God. But Brother Titus, when I asked somebody to come to church the other day, she looked at me real big. She said, I can't come to church. I don't want to address
You know what I did? I told her, I said, Sissy, you come on to church anyhow. Right. Brother Joe, ain't you a hole in this church? Yes, I am holy. I'm so holy in this. I love the Lord, and the Lord loves sinners. Right. He came for the sinners. Right. He came for the backslide. Right. I've not always looked this way, Sister Rachel. Sister Charlene, no, you've not right. always right. looked the way you do. Holiness didn't bring me to Jesus, but Jesus brought me to holiness. That's right. What y'all don't know is there was some. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be respectful, but there was a, another group of Pentecostal people, not Trinity of the Doctrine, that was sitting behind us. And I heard them gasp. Because they seen my two daughters was with me. And one, the one was sitting there and the other was standing up. And they seen we was holding us, Brother Titus. And they gasped. Like they couldn't believe I told that lady to come on to church. Yeah. Well. There's people going around needing help daily, Brother Fred. Mm -hmm. And we've got exactly what they need. Yeah. When y'all. When I'm preaching to y'all, don't think that I, I think we've got a self-righteous spirit. I, I, I don't think that at all. I think we got the best love and holiness group of people there ever was. This side of heaven. You know how I know? Because I've seen it put into action, Sister Sharp. All right. But I've come to tell us today. That there's people going to hell daily. The Bible says daily hell enlarges herself. Why is that, Brother Matt? That's right. Because there's a lot of people going. Yeah. Brother Fred, when I go to the hospital, I go for one reason. I don't go to get sicker. I go to get better. When sinners come to the house of God, they shouldn't leave. The same way they come in. No. Brother Joey, are you saying you don't believe in holiness? I believe in holiness. Yes. I believe in a good dress code. I believe in a good standard on the platform. On. You all know me better enough to know that. You know what they used to teach me, brother, friend? And you know what the problem is in the church world nowadays? We're so worried about what people's going to think. Amen. Amen. How they're going to label us. I got news for y'all. Chapel's been done and labeled a long time ago. There's yes. just people in this community that labeled us as the Rachel. Yes. <laughs> That's all right, though, because in that great kid in the morning, they're going to be mistaken. Yep. On that judgment day, Brother Titus, they're going to be mistaken. I got news for a, a group of people. There's going to be people in heaven that you or I didn't think they ever going to walk through those gates. There's going to be people in hell that you and I thought would never end up in hell. Mm -hmm. I got news for some people. There's going to be people in hell that never thought they would have ended up in hell. Yeah. And I'm not judging nobody. But the Bible says you'll know them by the fruits they bear. Yes. They're still 30 years in this and they still act in the same way. Come on. Amen. This ain't my agenda. This ain't Sister Charlene's agenda. This ain't Brother Fred's agenda. This ain't any, anybody's agenda to make it their own personal means and to make it their own personal way. Brother Titus. But if we ain't pointing people and folks to the cross and showing the love of Jesus Christ, what are we showing them? Yeah. 
helping God. You know why Cain slew his brother? Because of jealousy. Yeah. Yep. You know what? The church world is in a mess. I, I'm just going to get real plain here in a minute. Just sit back, put your seatbelt on, and hold on. I'll be out of the way here in a minute. You know why the church world's in the mess it's in? You know why we got so many churches all over God's blessed country? Because of jealousy. Yeah. Come on now. Somebody say amen, Brother Joey. Amen. You got jealousy in your heart, you're going to split hell wide open. I don't care how long your hair is. I don't care how much you talk in tongues. I, I don't care how good you look, how, how good you sound, how heavy you sing, how good you preach. You got jealousy in your heart, you're going to end up in hell. Well, come on. If you're all about tearing somebody down because you don't want them to prosper, you got the wrong spirit. You might as well just get in the altar and get a spiritual walk and a spiritual checkup with God. Amen. Yes. I'm glad our ladies, they have the long hair, and I'm glad we have a good standard, Brother Titus. But if we haven't got it on the inside, then we ain't got nothing. Nope. If we're so consumed with strife and envy, mm -hmm. worried about tearing somebody down uh, because they don't like us and because they don't look like us and because they don't act like us. And I got news for you. You might want to check your Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost, I, I got no one to do that kind of trash. No. But yet we say we're going to heaven. You might want to get a good walk with God before you say you're going there. Because if you're willing to kill your brother or your sister because they got something better than you, guess what? You can have it too. Brother Titus, yeah. if you... And nobody fall out with me. Me and Brother Titus, we're, we're, a tight, we're like double-sided tape. You can't get rid of us. But Brother Titus, if you don't like me because I can't do really anything good. But let's just say, let's just say I can play that piano like you. But, but if I can play the piano better than you and you don't like me, and because God uses me when I play that piano, guess what? You can have it too. Right. You know what you got to do to get the goods of God? You got to get down and work at it. Right. Yeah, pay the price. There's a lot of people and a lot of preachers and a lot of pastors and a lot of saints. God help me tonight. They get jealous because somebody can. And I don't believe in preaching competitions. Mm -mm. I, I, I don't believe in getting up and preaching so, so somebody can recognize you. If you're doing that, you might as well just step on out of the pulpit because you ain't called anyway. I don't believe in sin competitions. You come to chapel and you try to out sing somebody, you might as well just hold your seat because, quite frankly, you ain't even welcome on the platform because I don't want that mess. I don't want that spirit of self-righteousness and envy and strife in this church house. I ain't got it now and I don't want it later. All right. That's right. You're right. Can somebody say amen, Brother Joe? Amen. But Sister Charlene, you come into the church house with that kind of spirit, guess what? You're going to leave the church house the same way you came in, if not more miserable, because you won't get mad when people won't get in with you. Mm -hmm. Sister Ann, I know there's people right now that, that watch us live, they get mad because they can't have services like we do. You know why? Because they don't want to pay the price. Yep. Abel paid the price, Sister Charlotte. Abel was a worker in the garden. What about that? One of the hardest things you can ever do is work in a garden. You got to weed it. Mm -hmm. Spend hours in it. Yeah. We got people that come to the house of God. They, they throw a little five-minute prayer 
as they're walking out the door and as they get out of the shower before church on Saturday and church on Sunday morning and church on Sunday night. They want to put five minutes into it and get upset when nobody gets behind them when they get up to preach and, and nobody gets behind them when they get up and sing and nobody gets behind them Come when on. they get up and testify. Mm -hmm. Dedicate yourself. Consecrate yourself. Right. Commit yourself to the Lord. Yes. You know what will happen when you do that? You'll be a help. Yeah, right. You'll be a rock that somebody can stand on. Come on. You'll be a stepping stone along the life way to heaven. Mm -hmm. But instead, we've got Christians running around letting the devil use them. Yes. we got Christians running around getting mad because somebody didn't say amen when the preacher got up and preached. If y'all don't amen me, that's all right. I'm going to preach anyhow. If I get up to sing and nobody else shouts and I shout, oh well, I know what I'm shouting about. Yes. You don't like me because I get up and preach. The problem ain't with me, it's with you. Yes. But we got pre people getting up and preachers getting up, getting upset and getting all tore up. Because somebody didn't shout. Because somebody didn't do something when they got up to sing. So you know what they do? Well, that's Sister Rachel. Yeah, well, did you see what she did tonight? <coughs> she thought she was something got up and sung. Right. Honey, if it bothered you that much, you might as well took it and put it in the altar. Yeah. <laughs> but Joe, no, you're too worried about trying to destroy somebody. Trying to take God's name off them. Ain't you so glad the word says that I'm in his hand and no man can pluck you yes. from the master's hand. But we've got little spirits that follow us around and try to discourage us. We've got people being used of the devil. Right. <coughs> Sister Charlene, you're not my enemy. No. Sister Rachel, you're not my enemy. Mm -mm. Brother Titus, you're not my enemy. Right. Brother Matt, you're not my enemy. But if we're not careful, we can let the enemy use us to work against one another. Yeah. That's why we got all kinds of churches all over America. Because somebody didn't like what one pastor did. Back a few years ago, Brother Matt, before I had become pastor, I would talk to the previous pastor and I'd say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Sister Charlene, I know why now he didn't do what I asked him to do. Because it's not easy being a pastor. All right. <coughs> if you don't like what your pastor's doing, and I'm not saying any of y'all don't like what I'm doing. I hope you do, but if not, you can take it up with God and ask God to show you why I do what I do. If not, sit down and we can talk about it. But if you if you got a problem with the way your pastor does something, don't get mad and leave him right. and go five doors down, two blocks over, three blocks over and start another church. Right. That's the problem with the church world. That's why we got all these churches in this little bitty old county. And all of us together could fill up one church building. Yeah, no doubt. Because we decided we was going to be a rock to destroy instead of a rock to help. Mm -hmm. We've decided that it was easier to do things our way. I ran into somebody today and talking to them, they told me a timeline of a series of, of events that has taken place in their life over the past year and a half. And she said something to me and was talking to me about it all, Brother Fred. And I said, sis, if this would have happened four or five years ago, you would not be here today.
you wouldn't have been able to see God's plan four or five years ago. You wouldn't have been able to understand what God was doing. You wouldn't be able to understand His right. ways. <coughs> she said she's had a lot of discouragement. A lot of people come against her. They'll do it. But she said she had a few people that would encourage her. We've got people, our neighbors, all the way around us. Who's your neighbor? It's just not the person that lives beside you at your physical address. For the Titus, our job is not to be God's policeman. And y'all know me good enough to know that if the Lord moves on me to preach something, I'm going to preach it regardless who's here and who's not. That's right. But just getting up and preaching any old thing because you've got eyes and you see what's going on in uh -huh. somebody's life does not mean it's a God. That's right. And it's because you get up and you preach and you know what somebody's going through and you get up and harp on what they're going through without calling their name doesn't mean it was a message sent from God. That's right. If you're in that type of mess, I encourage you to get out of that mess. Mm -hmm. But our job, Brother Titus, is to love. And love unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Well, look, Brother Matt, who does he think he is? All that facial hair. Brother Matt, I love you, buddy. And guess what? With or without facial hair, you can still go to heaven. Yeah, right. yep. Amen. You know, there's people in the church world that say everything and it labels everything a sin, but they Yeah, they do. Foolishness. Yeah. If you ain't got Bible for it, then stay out of the pulpit with it. Yeah. Come on. You know your words can either help somebody live or they can kill somebody. That's right. Absolutely. But yet we're too worried about what people are doing. Getting wrapped up and caught up in, in somebody else's life. They used to have an old saying while he was busy going through somebody else's closet, your closet door came open and your and your skeletons fell out. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they will. You better be careful if you're a busy body. Uh -huh. It's so easy to get wrapped up on what the world is doing and what others are doing, Sister Rachel. Oh, yeah, I gotta keep me straight. I like that. I'm doing good enough to keep me straight. That's right. I'm doing good enough to keep myself saved and sanctified, let alone worry about somebody else. Yes. Just because you don't like how somebody fixes their hair, just because you don't like what somebody's doing, doesn't mean it's wrong. No. Now, there are certain things that we can get on that's wrong, but I'm not talking about those certain things. But yet we're so busy, worried about, and consumed. People are consumed, Brother Matt, with what others are doing. Yeah. We'll go out of the way, Brother Matt, to find out somebody else's business. Right. 
How many of you like the people when they get up to, uh, they come to talk to you? Now, since I need you praying for uh, Brother Matt, he's out there uh, seeing all the women and going after the bars. And, and now, I'm not telling you this to gossip. I'm just telling you this as a prayer request. Bull <laughs> You ain't telling me that as a prayer request. You're telling me that to gossip. Yeah. <laughs> and you know I'm telling you the truth. You don't know what Brother Matt's going through. You could have the words to speak life into that man. Yeah. But instead, we'll use our words to kill him. I want to love like he loved. Lord, have mercy. That's a lot. I want to live like he lived with Sister Rachel. Yeah. Jesus loved people so much. That when he left them, he left them when they, when they were changed. Mm -hmm. And not changed for the bad. I don't ever, I, my memory may be slipping, Sister Charlene, with a friend, but I never recall one story where Jesus left somebody in worse shape than he found them. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the worst person that he come across was the man of the gallery. That story talked about Sister Rachel, that he that, that man was found. And he cut himself. Mm -hmm. He was out of his mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's how the story starts out, Brother Friend. Oh, but after Jesus left him, you know what the story said? He went to the streets and he was in his right mind. That's what Jesus does. When Jesus rolled up on the scene, Sister Rachel, dead men came alive. When Jesus rolled up on the scene, Brother Matt, blinded eyes were opened. When Jesus rolled upon the scene, Brother Fred, lame men got up and walked and left around. Yeah. When Jesus got up on the scene, people was crying out to him, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Mm -hmm. And Jesus stopped in the midst of the crowd and called to blind Bartimaeus. And blind Bartimaeus received his sight. When Jesus went to Jairus' daughter, to Jairus' house, Jairus' daughter came back to life. Mm -hmm. You know what Jesus said before he went away? He said, greater things that you shall do. But I've got news for the church world. You know what the church world has done? We've done the complete opposite. Oh, they're almost dead. Let's make sure they die. Okay. Oh, they're blind. Let's make sure they're lame. Oh, they're deaf. Let's make sure they're blind so they can't see or hear. Yeah. But Sister Charlene, we're supposed to have the power of God in our lives. We're supposed to be the difference. Between heaven and hell for them. Years ago, when people seen the Pentecostal movement, they seen it as a hope and as a beacon and a lighthouse. We're not known for that much anymore. There's still a few of us that is. You know what we're known for now? We're known because we talk about somebody. Because we run somebody down. 
Because we gossip. Lord of mercy. When Jesus met Zacchaeus, Brother Matthew met him at the tree. And Jesus said, Hey, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to your house today. When Jesus left his house for the bread, Zacchaeus was a changed man for the good. Yeah. You know, there's people that when they see Pentecostal holiness people in Walmart, they will turn and run down a different aisle. Yeah. Not because they're afraid of being convicted. So I just blew your little theory out of the water. But because they'll be convicted. Yeah. No, it's not because they'll get convicted. It's because they don't want to get talked about. All right. We can still have a standard. And we can still love. Mm -hmm. We can still look good, saved, and sanctified, Brother Matt, but we can still love. Right. I overheard something the other day. I don't know why I'm preaching on this. But Brother Titus, it was about two waitresses. They was Standing and talking as I was in line waiting on my food. You know what they said? They, it was a, I forget what night it was. Maybe it was a Wednesday, but they was talking about the church crowd. Sister Charlene, they said, them church people are the worst type of people. They leave a mess. Yeah. They're the worst tippers. They don't care. They don't do anything. Right. But yet we'll witness to them about Jesus. Or we're supposed to anyway. Did you know your witness is more than the way you look and more than the way you talk? Yeah. It's the way you act when you're with a bunch of sinners. Mm -hmm. They might be talking ungodly and they might be handling unclean conversation, but you ain't got to judge them. They know they're doing wrong. You know what they need? They need love. Yeah. If they don't see the love of Christ in the way we live, Sister Charlene, they're never going to see it in anybody else. Yeah. But you ask the church world, are you going to heaven? Everyone is going to say, yeah. But we're so ate up with envy and strife and jealousy, malice and contention. <coughs> it ought not be that way, Sister Charlotte. When the world sees me, Sister Rachel, I want them to see the love of Christ. Right. Anybody ever seen somebody so full of Christ that that person glows? Mm -hmm. Even on a dark, gloomy day, they glow. Mm -hmm. Even when they're sick and they don't feel good, they glow. Yeah. I want that glow about me, Sister Charlene. I want when the world sees me, I want them to see Jesus Christ. Yes. I don't want them to see me. I don't want them to see Joseph Harrison Jewel the Third, but I want them to see. Jesus Christ. That's right. I want them to see the body of Christ. I've been in church my whole life. God knows when I'm preaching like this. 
But Brother Fred, I've, I've witnessed the worst of the worst. I've, I've seen people come to the altar and because somebody had tattoos or because somebody was marred and scarred with sin. I, I'm not joking. I've seen people look and give people the side eye. I smell people come in smelling like a bottle, Brother Matt. And I've seen people stand back behind the church doors whispering. My God, what did you have if that's all you got? If we don't reach them, they are at stake of dying, lost, and going to hell for eternity. Mm -hmm. Sister Charlene, that's somebody's baby. Brother Matt, that's somebody's mommy. That's somebody's daddy. That's somebody's <coughs> son. Somebody's daughter. Yeah. Going to hell is not an easy thing to do. No. But yet we make it so easy for the sinner to walk right past us and right into the pits of hell. <coughs> We're supposed to have the answer that these people need. Yeah. We're supposed to be the lifeline for the man. But yet, we'll sit on our high horse <laughs> with our head through back. I know Christians right now, if they could drown when they walked outside, they would because they throw their head back so far and their nose is so far up in the sky, they drown. Mm -hmm. They've been saved for 40 years and they've got it all together for you. But they ain't got the right kind of love. But yet we label people. And we say, oh well, they can't do nothing for the kingdom of God. Or, oh they can. Or, oh they can't because of this. Oh but they can't because of this. And they can't because of this. You better be careful. As they get us home together, I've been living my heart. How many want everybody to go to heaven? Yeah. <coughs> Do you want your worst enemy to go to hell? No. <coughs> but yet we say we love the Lord. The Bible says, if you can't love your brother whom you have seen, then how can you love the Lord? And you have not seen. As they sing, let's find a place to pray.